On this crisp autumn morning, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki visited troops deployed at his country's border with Belarus as a migrant crisis between the two countries intensified. On November the 9th, Morawiecki spoke of a hybrid attack that threatened not only Poland, but the whole European Union. Nearby, thousands of migrants remained camped out on the Belarusian side of the border, a border now lined with a razor wire fence installed by Poland to prevent what it says is an orchestrated campaign by Minsk to flood it with migrants. A message was playing on a loop over loudspeakers. Attention, attention. The police inform. Crossing the Polish border is legal only at border crossing. The Polish Defence Ministry released this video showing what it said was a large group of Belarusian officers approaching the migrant camp. Journalists and NGOs are not being allowed access to the area. The previous day, migrants had attempted to force their way across, prompting clashes with Polish security forces. Poland has faced criticism from humanitarian organizations that say it is violating the international right to asylum by using force to push people back over the border. Some observers say this is exactly what Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko wants. He would like to have this kind of pictures in order to uh, divert the international attention from he, the crimes he's committed himself in Belarus and from the way how he is treating his own people, democratic opposition. He's putting people into jails. Uh, he is uh, um, persecuting journalists and, and independent media and organizations. And this is what, and he wants to show that the European Union basically does the same. The European Union said on November the 9th that there are around 2,000 migrants on the border. Poland put the figure at more than 3,000, but in any case, alongside the diplomatic dispute, a humanitarian crisis is building. Migrants have been posting videos of their plight online. <laughs> It was not possible to verify this man's comments, but it matches reports in other videos. Polish people living in the area have confirmed these accounts, and the Catholic Church has called for donations to help. Several migrants have died in freezing conditions. Lukashenko discussed the situation with Russian President Vladimir Putin on November the 9th. Minsk said the pair discussed what was called the harsh actions of the Polish side toward peaceful people. Earlier, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov suggested the EU might pay Belarus to stop the flow of people, echoing a deal it made with Turkey in response to the 2015 migrant crisis. I think that Lukashenko would like the EU to and, and the Western international community to some way um, end his international isolation. I mean, you know, paying him money to solve the problem would obviously be a very nice way of doing that. But, you know, easing on the on the sanctions. Um, I think these are the sort of things that that, you know, that he would um, uh, like to see to, to end the crisis. How realistic any of that is? Well, you know. Not very realistic, I don't think, because having up the ante in this way, it's then very, very difficult for uh, the Western international community, EU, to, 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 to climb down. As Lukashenko spoke with Putin, Poland's international allies voiced solidarity with Warsaw. The European Union condemned what it called gangster-style behaviour by the Belarusian government, accusing it of luring people to the border with false promises of easy entry to the EU. European Commission chief Ursula von der Leyen said Brussels was preparing further sanctions, possibly targeting airlines it deemed active in human trafficking. But the EU response has also been criticised for being too soft. It should be massive economic sanctions which would basically block the transport of Belarusian goods uh, via Poland um, to the European Union. And Lukashenko needs to uh, realize that there is an extremely high price for, uh, 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 for what he's doing because it's not just, not only an attack against the external border of the European Union, but it's also a crime against humanity. As the standoff continued, 
Lithuania began deploying more troops to its frontier. The country's parliament declared a state of emergency in its border area with Belarus amid reports that Belarusian authorities are sending migrants there to further escalate the crisis.